Hello guys, welcome back. Uh, this is the video for showing the problem, the solution to um, to the problem of a combined cycle. Okay, this is our problem. So we have two cycles: the gas cycle and the vapor cycle. In the gas cycle, we have uh, air that goes into the compressor at one bar, 105 degrees. In the combustor, we add 50 megawatts of uh, heat, uh, leaving the combustor at 1,250 degrees Celsius. That expands the turbine uh, and then, oh, until it gets to the um, 100 kilopascal pressure. Uh, it has an isentropic efficiency of 87%. The compressor, by the way, has a 85%. Now, this, this air will cool down in a heat exchanger and it cool down to 200 degrees. That heat will be used in this vapor cycle in which we have uh, more evaporating water until it gets to 12.5 megapascal and 500 degrees Celsius. It expands in a turbine which has an isentropic efficiency of 90%, and then it cools down in a condenser. The pressure of that condenser is one bar or 10 kilopascal. And then we have a pump in order to increase the pressure from 10 kilopascal to 12.5 megapascal. Finally, we are being told that the condenser is cooled down by water that runs through the condenser. Water goes in at 20 degrees and leaves at uh, 35. So what we are asked to find out is the mass flow rates of air, steam, and water. We need to find out the net power developed by the gas turbine and by the vapor cycle. Keep in mind that in both cases, we need to subtract the water that we need to give to the compressor and to the pump. Finally, we need to find out the thermal efficiency of the combined cycle. Okay, so we start by drawing our uh, diagram again. And uh, we did this with three colors just to make sure that we have uh, different colors for each gas. So what we are doing the analysis to help us to uh, relate to where we are. So we start by uh, computing our ideal uh, or gas cycle. So we swap to the color for gas cycle. We're going to use a variable specific heats. Let me in table A17. We have pressure one of 100 kilopascal. Temperature one of 298. Kelvin. Using our table, our process one to two is isentropic, so we can solve PR two equal PR one. Using the isentropic efficiency of 85% and the H2S, now state 3 is fixed with a uh, temperature. It's 1250, but that's Celsius, so we need to convert to. Uh, Kelvin, so one, that will be 1,523 Kelvin. Pressure, of course, is um, 14 kilopascal. At tables, we have again process three to four. Is isentropic, so we can get uh, 
and by using the isentropic efficiency. Finally, we will need to find out state five. Now, we notice that we have the amount of heat that we are providing. So from there, we can get the mass flow rate, the wind, which is equal to 60 megawatts, should be the same as mass flow rate of air times the enthalpy difference, so it's H3 minus H2A. This comes from our first law of thermodynamics. So, mass flow rate will be 50,000 because we need to have similar units between H3 minus H2A. And this gives us 51.66 uh, kilograms of air per second. We're going to compute uh, the we're going to compute the net work of this cycle. So the net work, the net power, will be the mass flow rate times the mass flow rate times the work of the turbine minus the work of the compressor. This will be so that's the first part. Now we switch to analyze the vapor cycle. So we switch to green ink. We need to compute our states. So state nine. Uh, pressure is 10 kilopascal. Quality is equal to zero. And for our tables, we can get H6, Two hundred and four point forty two. Now we need to find out state seven. We know that this uh, isentropic pump, so state seven, it's a given. Pressure is uh, ten thousand. 1500 kilopascal, temperature is 500. So we get we also have same units here. State eight, we know that pressure rate is the 10 kilopascal at S8 equals 7, and this will be the isentropic. Two thousand forty-six. that along with the efficiency, which is 0.9, Leads to 8A to be 2176.54. So now we uh, can recognize that is in the heat exchanger, but we need to do our first law analysis. So we have.
Now, uh, since we want the heat transfer from the hot fluid to, to the cold fluid without interacting with the surroundings, we're going to cancel Q in or Q out. Since we have a rigid part, we don't have any work in or work out. And since we have a steady state, this will be zero. So expanding this, and we will need to have this should be equal to zero. So arranging similar terms, we're going to have that the heat that is releasing the gas should be absorbed. Seven point three ninety eight kilograms of steam per second. Now we can compute the net power of the paper. So the net power, the net power of the steam cycle. will be the mass flow rate of steam times the work of the turbine minus the work of the pump. Expanding equal to 8,540.62. Net power is 26,000. 254 kilojoules per second. Note that there is a mistake here. And of course, we can obtain the efficiency through this network. Bye by the 50,000 that we have. So our efficiency will be 52.51%. Finally, we will need to find out the um, mass flow rate of water. Mass flow rate of water, we will need to do a similar analysis as with the, the one we did in the heat exchanger, but this time we're going to be dealing with cooling water. So you are going to be asked to do that. Just keep in mind that for cooling water, the amount of heat that will be absorbed will be the mass flow rate of water times Cp water times delta T. And the Cp In order for you to check your answer, the mass flow rate of water should give you 233.85 kilograms per second. With that, we already finished our problem. Uh, this is the last problem that we have in our um, ranking cycles for the moment. So thank you. Bye.